just got back from a fantastic but kind of exhausting day. I've been on a bookshop crawl with Jen and Lauren who are both wonderful booktubers whose channel will be in the description and we managed to buy a few books. Jen and Lauren have already filmed their book haul but I wanted to share with you the books that I've bought throughout the week because I've been to a few bookshops across London. This is a very, very dangerous place to live when it is independent bookshop week. So following this I'm going to be on a book buying ban until next month or at the end of next month when we have a booktuber meetup because we're going to do another bookshop crawl. So I am not going to buy any books until then and if I do you have permission to tell me off. Not that I do hauls, you probably wouldn't know, but I'm making an exception because it's independent book week and I love independent bookshops and I want to help support them and this campaign that they do is really fantastic. So the first bookshop that I went to, and I think it was last Saturday, was Stanford's which is a travel bookshop. I bought this book which is called Quiet London and I had seen Lena talk about this in the video that she did with Jen Campbell and I thought I'm in London and I'm one of these people who likes peace and quiet and I know that sometimes the hustle and bustle of the city will get to me. So this is a book full of quiet little nooks and crannies across the city where you can go and sit in a cafe that doesn't play music or you can wander around a gallery that isn't the National Gallery and just packed full of people. There's a whole section on bookshops in here and there's another one on libraries and another one on galleries so I'm just over halfway through this and really loving it. I think it may be my essential London guide. So from Stanford's I went on to Foils and I bought The End of Days by Janie Erkenbeck. I'd heard good things about this but the main reason that I picked it up is because of the cover and that's because I was going to meet the guy who designed this lovely book. I will link an interview that I did with him in the description. Also at Foils I picked up The Rental Heart and other fairy tales. Kirsty Logan wrote The Grace Keepers and I absolutely loved that book and I saw her talk about her book The Grace Keepers and it made me want to read more of her stuff and I do love my fairy tale adaptations and short stories so this should be fun. Then I caved in to peer pressure and bought Saga Volume 1. I'm not generally a graphic novel person but I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about this book and I figure that even if I don't like it it's got great layout inspiration. So on Monday Jen Campbell and I went to Norwich and we were going to go to the Book Hive which is an independent bookshop and it turned out that by the time we got there they had closed early because they were short of staff. We were really sad about that and didn't end up buying any books from independent bookshops in Norwich sadly. But later in the week I did pop into Persephone Books. They have these beautiful grey covers. Of course the stars of the show in these books are the end papers. This is Catherine Mansfield's Montana Stories because Catherine Mansfield is the best and you should should all read her. Then on Thursday I was at Dulwich Books for an event where Patrick Gale was talking about his latest novel A Place Called Winter which I have read and absolutely loved and would recommend to all. Seeing as I had already read his book I didn't want to buy that but I did want to buy a book to support the bookshop and to get it signed so I picked up A Perfectly Good Man. This was a little bit cheaper than buying the new hardback so I justified it that way. <laughs> Alright so now on to the books that I bought today under the bad influence of Jen and Lauren. We started off at the London Review Bookshop where I bought this book which I've been wanting to read for a long time, St Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves by Karen Russell. These are more short stories and I've really been enjoying reading short stories recently. I think Jen said that it's one of her favourite collections of all time. The second stop today was Persephone Books so I picked up another novel from there and this is Saplings by Noel Streetfield. The reason I picked this one up was because we are doing a read-along for this in July. I'm not sure exactly who is doing it but it's a thing that's happening and I better show you the end papers. There we are. I'm not really sure what this is about but lots of people have been very excited about the read-along in July. Sometimes it's fun just to go into a book blind. Our next stop was Words on Water which is a floating bookshop. It isn't the book barge but it's a similar sort of concept. To start with I picked up two books and the bookseller gave me a really strange look. He made some comment about admitting to having not read these and I said I, I have read them. It's 
just that my copies are in New Zealand and I really, really want to reread them. I have bought one final book from Words on Water and these are all secondhand, so they were pretty cheap, so I felt like I could justify buying a few of them. Um, this is The Heather Blazing by Cole McToybin and Patrick Gale cited Cole McToybin as one of his favourite authors, as one of his most influential authors. So I spied this one on my way out and swiftly bought it. On our way across London we popped into Watermark Books, which is right next to Platform 9 and 3 quarters but I didn't buy any books at that bookshop. Jen made a rule for herself for the bookshop crawl that she would only buy books that she only found out about through the bookshop rather than things that she already had on her TBR or other people had recommended. So I followed her rule on this one because I'd never heard of this and neither had Jen or Lauren, but I just thought it sounded kind of fascinating and strange. I think they're short stories. It's called Revenge of the Mooncake Vixen, a manifesto in 41 tales by Marilyn Chin. Marilyn Chin was actually called Mei Ling and she changed her name because she really liked Marilyn Monroe. Anyway, it sounds like a sort of mix of folk tale and fairy tale and feminism. And yeah, I guess we'll just have to read this and get back to you on that one. The final bookshop that we went to was one of my favourites and it's just so quirky and lovely and it's called Book and Kitchen. It's in or near Notting Hill. My my London geography is still a little bit off, so I'm not sure if it's actually in Notting Hill itself or nearby, but it's quite a posh part of London. And there's this amazing little bookshop. As the name would suggest, it has books, but it also has a kitchen where it does food, as kitchens do. There's a little courtyard out the back where Lauren and Jen filmed their book haul. And on the way out, I bought this book, The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. I love these editions, I think they're some of my favourite classic editions, and I've really enjoyed the Angela Carter that I've read so far. She's such an influential author on a lot of my favourite contemporary authors. So this was my final purchase supporting independent bookshops. So that's a fair stack of books. Some of them were secondhand, so they were reasonably cheap. Books in the UK as well do tend to be quite a bit cheaper than in New Zealand. But regardless, I think that's quite enough books for now. I've got plenty to be reading, so I'm not allowed to buy any more books for about a month. This is also why I don't do book hauls because I'm made to confront the number of books that I have bought. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that it has inspired people to go out and support their independent bookshops because at the end of the day, that's what this was all about. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye.